uh, do it for them. Do it for them because they can't they can't be here doing it for themselves and heal. And obviously, you know, they're watching over us and every day. Just do it for them. Doing stuff that I wasn't able to do before, or, or I guess when I was standing up, not being able to do stuff I can now. Like for example, the stampede. And, you know, you see all the rides and you, you know, and stuff like that, and you gotta you kind of watch other people go on it. Um, just little things like that kind of sucks. Friends don't treat me any different. Uh, it's still a good time, but you know, obviously, I need a little more help now. But over the course of time, I, I want to be able to do stuff on my own. When we saw him in the hospital. That was oh, that was hard. With all the tubes, and everything. It was just amazing how fast he he started doing for himself as well. Um, you never want to see your kid like that, never. And it was ooh, it was hard. Well, as Michelle and I are walking through the ICU, is you couldn't recognize any of the boys um, or Dana because she was in there too. And I just remember grabbing Michelle going, just brace yourself, because they were unrecognizable. And then when we got to Ryan's room, he had a cut right there. And then it was kind of, well, knew it was him, but he was out after his surgery. And then uh, when he woke up, we were right there, and then he kind of looked. And first thing he actually said was, I'm sorry. And I looked at him, and I went, what are you sorry for? And then he goes, I can't feel anything. I went, pal, I don't give a shit about that. I said, you're alive, and we'll focus on that. Then he goes, did Team Canada win the sledge hockey, like in the uh, Olympics? And I went, pal, they lost 2-1 to the States. And then he looks and he goes, I'm going to try out for sledge hockey. And then Michelle and I, our eyes bugged out and went, where did he come up with that? And then that's been his goal since that. Hockey is such a big part of my life that I, I thought I would never you know, play the sport again, and now I've just grown to accept it almost and find a new way around it, being involved in the game as, as much as I can. This is seven times out on the ice, and I mean, it's, it's amazing, right? I mean, for how short of a time it's been since, you know, the, the incident happened, and I mean, given, you know, everything that he's gone through and, you know, the laundry list of injuries that he had, for him to be out here doing this, it's just unthinkable. And it's, it's you know, sledge is just a whole different beast in itself, having to use your, your arms as both your mode of mobility and be able to stick handle and shoot the puck with everything and then incorporate that all into one smooth motion while you're on the ice. And, and Ryan, being that high-level hockey player, has that, he has that drive right now and he wants to be elite. It's one of those you gotta, you know, you gotta crawl before you can walk, right? And he's wanting to go right to running. You know, with his drive and everything that, you know, what, what he's putting into it right now, I have no reason to believe that, you know, it's something that he wouldn't be able to do. I mean, it's obviously, you can't ever say something like that's going to be set in stone, right? But his drive and determination is something like I've never seen before. And I think he's willing to put in the amount of time, the amount of effort needed to, uh, to get where he needs to go. I think I've become a better person, honestly, and, um, you know, before being like a hockey player, I guess, you know, you have that sort of swagger behind you and stuff like that, and, you know, you're not, not always the most humble person, but now, you know, we, you're in a different situation and, you know, you're a lot more humble and, and careful and just kind to other people because, you know, you never know when the last time you're going to see them is. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I mean, like Rick Hansen said when he came to visit me in the hospital, is there, there's more to a person than his or her legs. So, you know, just kind of be an, an inspiration to other people and, and kind of show people that, you know, when one door closes, another one opens. Well, the big adjustment is watching Ryan. He used to be able to do everything himself, trying to figure things out. So 
That's been a tough adjustment, seeing him every morning transfer and having to do what he has to do to get ready. So that's pretty tough, but he seems okay. He's adjusted to it, so we adjust with him. Right, because you had a 19-year-old that, like I said, could do whatever basically he wanted, and now he's getting craned into a bed. Um, but I tried to stay positive with him, and I'm like, pal, this ain't gonna last forever. You'll be able to do all this on your own, so. And his goal, obviously, was to get strong and to be able to take care of himself, and so he could try out for the, the sled hockey team. I think for the whole family, it's tough to watch. Like, uh, with Jet, he's always loved when Ryan came home for Christmas so they could go skate on the pond. So obviously, that, that won't happen anymore unless Ryan takes his sled out there. But, uh, and with Jaden, a tough adjustment seeing her big brother like that. And Ryan still protects her and kind of, with the boyfriend situation, he's like, hey, I'm sitting, I'll still take care of him. So, so it's just tough for everybody. But uh, like I said, we move on, he's alive. So we just try and get him to the next stage. We were close when we were younger and then he's the older brother so obviously we drifted apart and he got into like hockey and stuff like that and then that ac the accident happened and we've just been closer than ever now and I like to say that I'm his favorite. <laughs> uh, before he went off to play hockey in Leduc we were like starting to get like that like brother bond and then he wanted to go play we kind of lost that bond as he went away for hockey for like two years and then came back for Christmas started to bond more and then the crash happened and it was it's been good, I guess. He's still kind of my big brother, so he's always going to bug me and you know, call me call me names. And, yeah, I can't really get over that. I think it's just adjusting to everything, like to um, Ryan like and his limits and stuff like that. And then our house, like waiting for that all to come together and then just being in a hotel, like being really close together, but it's okay. I've kind of just grew up with him being so inspirational to me and, and obviously my siblings. Like he's just a very inspirational person and not very surprising that people are, are wanting to meet him and all that. It's kind of cool. I learned to skate was five. So hockey, I think must have been, Timbits was about six. Um, yeah, he hated it. <laughs> he did not want to do it. Tom would literally have to pick him up and throw him on the ice. and say, get out there, you're gonna, one day you're gonna thank me. But he was also that guy that didn't really like attention, didn't really want to be the center of attention. He, he used to get nervous before games, even though there wasn't thousands and thousands and thousands of people there. But now he's, he's kind of, I don't know, he has absolutely no problem with talking to people now. And, and just he would, he would have been a very quiet kid unless you got to know him really well before. I just wanted to keep it close kind of as a reminder and kind of a story you know when you know later on in life when I'm you know 70 80 and my grandkids ask you can tell them you a, a big story I guess. Is it emotional for you to look at you know some of those names and numbers? I mean yeah mixed emotions um, but uh, you know it's keep it close to me and you know use it as motivation. Uh, leaned up against the semi truck and just a whole bunch of like you don't know what to think. Your mind's uh, jumbled, but you're, you're hearing noises. You're, you know you got a ringing in your head, a lot of pain. I think um, from what I remember seeing a whole bunch of stuff. And I mean I hope nobody ever has to go through that. But I mean it's uh, that wasn't great. Just everyone around me, I think, just seeing how hard they work. Um, I've, I've had trainers and coaches and people in the past who have helped me get mentally t uh, strong and, and know that it's not the end of the road. Um, I was always taught when one door closes, a lot more open. So just being optimistic, keeping that positive attitude. Um, I was always told during a game when you're down or you're losing, um, when things aren't going your way, your true colors start to show. And obviously I think this is a, a good example of it. Um, 
you know, things might not be going our way, but as long as we keep optimistic and positive, we'll, we'll get through it. Um, figuring out who we are as a family. I think together now, we are together an awful lot. And um, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not a great thing. Um, but we're sort of figuring out what different roles we can play with each other. Now we can, um, you know, the kids can be more independent now that they're driving, so that's good. Um, Brian still got to, he's got to start from scratch for everything, so we're learning how all of that goes and the struggles that come with his condition and um, being a para. And, um, but we've made some amazing connections with people and, and really feel like um, there's a lot of people in our corner and it makes us want to do better. I think it just feels like it's been a long, long time, but then certain events feel like it's just been not that long ago. So, you know, it's, it's a big, big adjustment, but we're just handling it as we can. Um, some days get stressful, like uh, like everyone has good days, bad days, and when those bad days hit, you just got to plow through that and try and make it a positive day. So every morning I'll uh, wake up, look out the window, see the sunshine or the snow, and go, okay, let's make this a good day. I'm going to use Ryan as, a, as an example for myself as well. Even when things look their bleakest, um, I think it's important to just keep putting one foot in front of the other, literally or figuratively. You know, you gotta keep trying. Get up, get going. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, and keep laughing if you can. I think being able to uh, live on my own, um, that'd be huge. Um, obviously being more independent, stuff like that. But I think for, for my goals, it's uh, obviously playing sledge hockey for hopefully the national team and you know, doing something with my life, like a job that I enjoy doing or, or a hobby or something like that, kind of getting my mind off things and, and just getting going.